Hi, I'm Jared Fossen with UEN, here for another episode of PDTV. And I'm excited to have our next guest here with us. We've been planning this episode really since last spring, and it's finally worked out that we're able to get together, albeit 2020 style, uh, socially distanced and all. So without any further ado, let me introduce our guest. We've got Corey Henwood, who is the Innovation Coordinator, fancy title there, in Iron County School District here in Utah. He's also the founder of Launch High School, which is a personalized competency-based school focused on design thinking and building essential skills in students. So don't worry, we're gonna dive deeper into what all those big words mean, those buzzwords. And then Corey started out as a math teacher, right? That's right. And you've just been in all sorts of positions in public school districts in Canada and the United States. Correct. Well, we're glad you're here in uh, Cedar City with us. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here. This is a great spot to work and to innovate. I mean, Utah is just at the, the cutting edge of education right now, I feel like. And what a great place to be for innovation, you know. So did you come up with the title Innovation Coordinator for yourself? Or is that actually what the title was when you got hired? <laughs> Initially, when I got hired, it was uh, under digital teaching and learning. And so I was digital teaching and learning specialist. My position's grown to cover both digital teaching and learning, computer science, um, competency-based education, and a slew of other strategic innovations in the district. And so now uh, putting that all under one umbrella, innovation seemed like the best fit. And so our superintendent's gone the way of naming our team, the innovation, uh, innovative teaching and learning team. And uh, I help coordinate that work. Well, I like that. I, I've actually been known to change my title a little bit depending on the setting. And so I may dive into the innovation specialist thing. Like I, I, I like the idea there. It's worth doing. It makes me feel better. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay, well, I gave a bit of a descri description of the school in the intro, but why don't you tell us a bit more about Launch High School and what all the buzzwords mean? Yeah. So Launch High School, as was mentioned, personalized competency-based school. The neat thing about Launch High School is the way that students demonstrate mastery of concepts. So the idea of competency-based is students advance based on mastery. They dive into more transferable competencies. Um, there's a lot of ways to, to demonstrate that and many schools do it differently, but at Launch High School, primarily students demonstrate that kind of mastery through their project work with local community organizations and businesses. And so that's kind of that capstone to every standard and topic that they take on is to cap it off with some form of application. And when they do that, they show they've been able to transfer that knowledge to, uh, you know, uh, that creative space, then they're able to move on. And that's really uh, the exciting thing. And not only is it competency based, but it's also personalized to their interests, the way they would like to apply it. And so they have a lot of voice and direction over their work there at Launch High School. So, so this is a high interest level thing for students uh, because they do have so much personalization over it. I, I like that a lot. I also like that I, like I don't have to take a test every time to, you know, consider, be considered master, you know, of, of any type of subject. Right. Yeah. And there, there are still, you know, we still do focus on many of the, the basic skills and some of the routine pieces to show basic proficiency. Um, so there are, I don't want to code it like there are no tests. There are some uh, quizzes and tests at the school, but that's not really the focus of the school. Mm -hmm. The focus is to go beyond that and spend more than half of their time on those kind of project type work. So that's really the focus of the school. So why was launch started? Two main reasons when you look at starting a personalized competency-based school. I'll start first with the idea of developing those deeper competencies. We asked our community, what are the essential skills students need to be successful in their future? And uh, we had many responses from K-12 educators, but certainly in our business and community leaders, our post-secondary educators, our parents and students. And they came up with a set of eight transferable skills. Um, things you would readily identify like good communication skills, being responsible, you know, uh, being creative thinkers and, and a series of others. And those skills were recognized as kind of lacking in what we teach in traditional academic settings and um, needed to be developed further. So that was one side of what our community is looking for. The other is to really personalize. So much of what we do right now is personalized. Um, I go on my YouTube feed. The whole feed is personalized for me and my interests. And if I can get that from technology in all sorts of things in my daily life, I ought to get it in what I'm interested in learning and how it's gonna be best suited for my learning style. 
parents and students want that, they recognize that, they come to our board meetings, they're looking for placements, whether that's at the end of, hey, my student has been passed along, has a lot of holes in their learning or has special needs, or they are bored and are ready to move on and, and are ready to dive deeper into subject matter. Both ends of that spectrum are getting bigger and bigger all the time. And so um, with all that uh, need for personalization and competency-based progression, that's where Launch has kind of been born out of that need. I love that the community helped come up with the essential skills for what, you know, what the students would be learning. And then you realized you had to make some adaptations with actually what you were doing at the school. And the fun thing about it has been not just stopping at their input on what skills they wanna see, we've brought the community in to help us design this school. So uh, our friends at uh, Southern Utah University and Southwest Tech and throughout at SEDC and other uh, organizations have helped bring together both parents, experts, business leaders to help us design this particular school and how it would work, how it would function how students would uh, become involved in the work. Uh, parents and students have also helped us design this school. So, you know, as much as we want to solve these problems and think we have great ideas, often bringing people into the design of this has really been what's made this powerful and has helped people to not just buy in, but really design this and lead this work. So that's kind of been fun. Wow, well, I, I, I think that whole process that you described there it sounds a bit overwhelming, but at the same time, with all the support that you have there, it, it seems very doable as well. I mean, if you're willing to work with um, the willing, if you will, like those who want to be involved in this work, who are making the claim that, hey, we need more of these transferable skills, or we need more personalization in our, stu in our uh, students, and we need resilient learners when it comes to the post-secondary level. Like, what are we going to do to help students become self-directed so they can, when they have the freedom of entering a university, that they're not just, you know, off in their own direction and they can be successful. When you have those people at the table, they can help design a solution that really makes sense. And um, that's, that's what we've seen so far with launch. Um, and the choice model of allowing students to say, this is a school that I want to be at. We're a lottery selection choice model kind of school uh, built within our school district, of course. And that also helps us uh, to be successful in this and not be fighting against, you know, opposition or I don't want to do that or, you know, it, that makes a big difference. I'm sure it does. And, and I would imagine that, you know, there's a lot of challenges for opening a school in any given year. This year has its own set of challenges. So what are some of those challenges and what are some of the solutions that you've come up with? All that has really gone back to this idea of design. So bringing educators together at the beginning of the year or before the school year began to develop our plan for safety around COVID, that was um, a huge success for us. Mm. Helping define what that's going to look like at the school. Um, really helped us all feel comfortable about what we're going to be doing this year. In addition to that, um, really working in a space where everyone is way more familiar with blended learning technology than they ever were before just by the sink or swim that happened in the spring, right? Um, and so we've had both our parents are more familiar, our students are more familiar with that. So there's actually been some benefits to opening in a year like this, mm -hmm. as well as some, of course, logistical things to need to, that we needed to navigate to help make this work. And uh, all in all, it's been, uh, you know, more successful than I thought it would be. Initially, I thought, gosh, we're going to have a real struggle this year. And I was praying, like, I please hope that we do not go fully remote to try to open a school this year. That would just have been mm. really difficult. And so we're happy to be in person with our students. You know, with the community so involved and, you know, you're saying that it's been successful even more so than you thought. Um, why don't you share some of the ways that students are working with the community um, with their projects? We're only a quarter into it and we're already seeing so much uh, just wonderful things that students are taking on. So we've had students, for example, one of our students took on the project of um, working with our local bus garage to try to uh, optimize the busing routes and uh, the finances and the working uh, group that they have there to make uh, the best use of their resources and time. And initially, uh, there could that could have been seen with some residents or uh, some some resistance rather from our uh, busing garage folks. 
but they totally welcomed in our student, said, hey, let's show you what we do. Let's come up with some ideas together. Here's our ones we've tried already. What Anyway, and this is a project that our students have been taking on with our, our employees at the bus garage, which has been great. Beyond just working with our school district, however, we've had uh, students go out and help to preserve uh, petroglyphs uh, of, from our local tribe. And we've worked with the local Paiute tribe to preserve those petroglyphs. We've had students who have gone to the city and actually uh, due to what we saw in remote learning suggests that we provide uh, internet as a city utility uh, that would be um, uh, some way subsidized by solar power as well. So all these kind of incredible pro proposals and ideas that students have put together in conjunction with our local partners at the city government, at our local businesses, our local uh, tribe and community organizations. It's just been a real pleasure to watch because uh, of how much they dive deeply into this kind of work that they, uh, they they're learning becomes deeper and more meaningful than, than ever before. And that's really been neat. And I really appreciate the examples that you shared there. Cause I, I think like, you know, there's a lot of times students have these ideas and like, Hey, I'm going to go fix this and I'm going to go change it. And you know, the example you had with like the, the busing, mm -hmm. they go in there with these ideas and then you have the, the bus people who are like, okay, yeah, you know, this is great let me tell you what we've already done. Let, let me give you some context of where we're at and let's figure out something together. And yeah. I just see that as such a great collaborative way to solve problems. Our students are one learning to be that some of them come into it like, hey, I've got the solution to this, duh. This is how it's gonna be. And then they learn some humility. They take some <laughs> feedback, right? Which is good for young people to do. And, um, and they learn about how things work in the real world. And I think not only that, but they're learning to apply their learning comes to, for example, geography class on city planning and urban development, they're learning to apply those things in real context, um, you know, and instead of just in some, you know, hypothetical situation, they're getting right down to business with our local leaders, which is great. And I think the model that you've created there, and, I, and I'm sure that this is going to be built on as you go throughout the year and next year and so forth, but I, I love the model where we're, you're going to find something that you're interested in. And then we're going to think critically about it. We're going to talk to, you know, professionals that are there. And then we're going to try to come up with a solution that works. This is really the, you know, this emphasis on design thinking uh, that we've talked about a little bit about the design of the school in human centered design. But we really teach that to our students to first gain empathy for those who you're trying to find solutions for, understand their needs come up with lots of ideas, prototype solutions, and then implement them and uh, get feedback and iterate based on uh, the feedback. I think that's a process that's transferable to any work that someone's gonna take on, uh, in whatever field they're going to take on. And it provides those kind of also opportunities to build those essential transferable skills that we want. Mm -hmm. and, and connecting that process with the content that they're learning too. This isn't outside of content or taking away from the content. This is taking meaningful application of their content into a space where there's an authentic audience and where they can make a real difference. So that's, that's, it's exciting because when I work over next door at launch high school with students, often my, my office is right next door in the building next door. And I, it just brightens my day to go over there and, and see students who are taking on real stuff and, and getting into the weeds of it. It's just a lot of fun. I bet it is because like, as, as I listen to this, like I'm thinking, where was this school? You know, when I was a student, like I totally would have loved this. Like this, this is to me, like the, the way that every student wants school to be. Well, and when you design with and not for your students, you come up with solutions that, that our students are, you know, are leading and want to own. And, and that's a big lesson for me. It's not like I have many years in design experience before. This has just been something that I've really found to be true over uh, the last few years of this. And so I'm, it's exciting. And you, you don't know how many times I've heard that from parents or from <laughs> exiting seniors who are like, where was this two, three, 10, 20 years ago? Right. You know, I would love to have seen this. And, and we just work from where we're at now and, and move forward and try to expand uh, this for more opportunities for students. That's great. And, and I'm sure that, you know, now that we're a quarter into it and, you know, really this process started a long time ago. So what are some of the lessons that you've learned so far with this model? Some of the lessons are that where we're at right now with students coming in at a high school level 
um, who have gone through nine plus years of education already in a traditional model to move to a space where there's a lot of self-direction required of students. Um, that takes a lot of scaffolding, a lot of help, a lot of mentoring, and it takes the right people to do that mentoring as well as some time, some consideration, um, not freaking out when things don't go well the first time or when a student starts to slip a little bit not to, you know, oh, this isn't working. So the patience of our leadership at the district level has been spot on. The patience of our parents and our students and our teachers um, to make this work for students, to target intervention and target instruction with students that need it. That's just a whole new ball game for anyone in education. And, um, and because the end goals are right, and because the design has been done with those who were serving, including parents and students and educators, um, there's a lot less um, willingness to just throw in the towel and say, no, this doesn't work. I think you said that really nicely because, you know, a, a lot of times when we come up with something new, and in this case where it is competency-based, where, it, you know, most of your parents, they were used to getting letter grades and they're used mm -hmm. to taking a, a test or a quiz to do that. And, and so it's a paradigm shift for the parents, the community, and your teachers as well. And so without having that buy-in in the beginning, like it does become really easy when it doesn't look the same as, as you know, your parents went through it and they're like, eh, I don't know about this. Absolutely. And the other thing that I would mention that really has been key to the success of the school is relationships. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've got just a wonderful set of teachers and administrators at the school who obviously care for each of the students. And um, that comes through whether they're poking them to get to work, whether they're pulling them together to get their projects done, giving them guidance, mentorship, calling and working with home. It's just really evident. And the teachers uh, exude that. And our parents pick that up quickly. The students pick that up quickly. And again, so when there are little issues, setbacks, misunderstandings, I don't understand what's going on, miscommunication, whatever that stuff is way more forgivable in a space where you know someone cares. Can't overemphasize that, so. Yeah, what, what a great point there. Yeah. Um, what are some of your goals and hopes for the future? So we're excited about potentially uh, and the possibilities and our plans for expansion of both Launch High School as well as personalized competency-based programs throughout our district. Um, taking this space, when, as I mentioned earlier, this building of self-direction and personalization and meaningful deep learning um, is hard to bring about as students come in for their first year into this type of school. And so part of the solution is, let's foster those skills earlier. Mm -hmm. Let's provide opportunities for students to do personalized competency-based learning in the middle school space and in the elementary space. Uh, there are plenty of other places that are doing that work and we want to uh, work to both expand in the lower grade levels as well as expand the number of students who can participate at the uh, high school level. Right now we're kind of limited just by space. We have an office building that the uh, launch is located in that the district owns and that just can't hold as many students as a traditional school. So through some of our bond initiatives or um, expansion um, into different wings of, of our existing traditional schools are some of the ways we're looking at doing that. So. I think that's so cool that, you know, you, you have this idea and then you go forward with it. You get the support of the community and the students and parents. And then every, now everybody's like, OK, let's make it bigger. Let's in, right. let's include more people. It, it's you know, it's working. It's probably not perfect in every sense. But like you said, you you have a lot of the, you know, the ideas for solutions to these and you and you have the right um, community mentality to help out there. Yeah, and that's key. And I think the longer uh, things like the waiting lists get and uh, the more people see in forms of public exhibition our work and our students' work, um, that's one of the struggles this year, to be honest, uh, the ability to do public exhibition of work uh, at our school. We're trying to do a lot of that virtually and otherwise and communicating with some of the audiences. But as people start to see that and they say, that's what I want my kid to be doing or that's what I want to be doing as a student that's the kind of work I want to do um, the more we get that out there the thing's going to expand itself really I mean that's I don't need to be doing a whole lot of uh, legwork to try to do all this stuff when the community wants it it's going to speak loud and clear to our our district office and our school leaders and and that's the way it'll move forward so 
I think that you have lived up to your title of being the innovation coordinator. I, I mean, I, I mean, what more, how more innovative can you get than starting a new school that has a paradigm shift for everybody into what traditional education is and has this new, you know, and not necessarily new, but just a, a different way of assessing and doing things, you know, competency-based, personalized learning, and just really like the title taken off with it, right? Like you're launching. That's right. It's, uh, it's really been a lot of fun. And, um, you know, this whole idea, there are a lot of things, a lot of logistics to try to organize them. So I don't want to underplay uh, the work that goes on, but really when it's a whole group, a community effort, um, and the state has been just wonderful at supporting us too. I mean, our competency-based education grants, the leadership from the state level to push this forward, to make it more, uh, remove some of the systematic barriers that have been in place. Um, we're, we're just happy to, to be where we're at right now. And uh, it's a lot of work, but it's it's the right work. I'm so glad we were finally able to, to have this interview. I wish I could have been down there in Cedar City right now. Cause that, I mean, I'll get down there and we'll do, a, we'll do the inside tour of the school and everything. But. Absolutely. Yeah, whenever whenever you're ready to, to get out, when they let you loose, Jared, I know you're itching to go. So, oh, I am, but uh, you know that's just the nature of things right now. But so but thanks at. thanks so much for being here with us and sharing what you're doing down in Iron County and especially at Launch High School. We're so glad that we were finally able to have this interview with Corey Henwood at Launch High School, and you can see the amazing things that they're doing. Uh, down there with this whole community, really community-based school that they've got going on there. And just a fantastic uh, way of looking at education and doing things differently. And I, and I love the innovation down there. And thanks again for Corey uh, for joining us. And we'll see you soon for another episode of PDTV.